again for today's episode let's answer the respiratory disorders which will be composed of three parts so of course make sure to watch the remaining two parts after this video okay yeah so let's begin for the first question, what should the nurse include when teaching health maintenance strategies to the client with COPD? Select all that apply. Yeah. So the question talks about health teaching for the clients with COPD. That is why we must already know what is the concept within the COPD. Come on. So as you can see in the choices, clients with COPD are highly susceptible to respiratory infections such as influenza, yeah. so they should be immunized yearly. Aww. And when we say immunization, letter A is included. And also, clients with COPD are highly susceptible to respiratory infections, such as pneumonia, so they should be immunized as prescribed by their healthcare provider. Aww. That is why immunization against pneumonia is also included. And then, the clients with COPD use a large amount of calories because of labored respiratory functions. Increased caloric intake is necessary to maintain healthy weight. Ah. So letter E is also included. Then, clients with COPD should undergo a progressive rehabilitation program to increase their activity tolerance. Ooh. That's why limitation of physical activity is a no-no. Ah. Then for the last one, fluid restriction is not needed with COPD unless there is fluid retention from another etiology. So letter D is not included. That's why the final answer is letter A, B, and E. Now for the next question, the nurse who is explaining the pathophysiology of COPD to a client includes which manifestation that can result from alveolar destruction. Select all that apply. <gasps> so the question talks about COPD. And when we say COPD, there is an impaired gas exchange occurring. And this is caused by the loss of alveolar surface area available for gas exchange. Ah. So letter A is included. And also in COPD, there is a loss of elasticity in the airway that can be attributed to repeated infections and inflammation, ah. which leads to airway collapse. Oh, no. So letter E is also included. Airway collapse can cause alveolar destruction because of either over or under inflation of alveolar sacs. Oh. Destruction of alveoli is not related to increased dead space air, pulmonary emboli, or chronic dilation of bronchioles. With COPD, there is a progressive narrowing of bronchioles. Oh. So, letter B, C, and D are not included. Come on! That's why the final answer is letter A and letter E. Now, let's proceed. What explanation should the nurse give to a client and family regarding the development of COPD in a client adult? <gasps> so, what do you think the answer? Maybe you answered letter B, C, or D because there is smoking. But actually, onset of the physiological changes compatible with COPD is most often associated with hereditary deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin. That is an enzyme that protects lung tissue against loss of elasticity. Oh no! Onset of smoking during childhood, heavy secondary smoke exposure during childhood, and use of smokeless tobacco during childhood are not typically associated with early onset of the physiological alteration of COPD. Oh. That's why the final answer is letter A. Oh. The hereditary deficiency of Alpha 1 anti -trypsin. Now for the next question, a client who develops acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS is exhibiting hypoxemia and responsive to oxygen therapy. In explaining the client's condition to the family, the nurse would incorporate which concept? <gasps> okay, now for this question, when we say ARDS, 
A common topic in the board exam, it usually talks about within the scope of Alvi life. And one of the primary alterations occurring with ARDS is the collapse of alveoli and therefore loss of ventilation in those areas which is thick secretion blocking the airways are not a consideration. So letter D is eliminated. Then look at letter C. Surfactant production decreases with ARDS, which is a factor that impairs adequate gas exchange. Ah. That's why there is no excess surfactant on this kind of disorder. So letter C is also eliminated. Ah. So among the two, the correct answer is letter A. One of the primary alteration occurring with ARDS is the collapse of alveoli as I have said a while ago. And therefore, loss of ventilation in those areas. Ah. Air does not become trapped in hyperinflated alveoli in ARDS. That's why letter B is wrong and the correct answer is letter A. Now for the next question, what intervention should the nurse identify as the priority for the client who is unable to adequately clear the airway because of a tumor mass? Okay, this question talks about airway which is a very important matter. So might some of you answered letter A? Yeah. Which is a provision of supplemental oxygen? Yes, it is important, but it is not related to the ability to clear secretions from the airway. Ah. Though you provided enough oxygen to the patient, yet the airway is still blocked, <gasps> it is ineffective. So letter A is wrong. Oh. If you answered tracheostomy, you might be very excited, but insertion of a tracheostomy is not a primary treatment to maintain airway clearance. So letter D is not priority. So among the two, if you answered letter B, elevating the head of the bed might help the client to cough more forcefully. But head elevation alone is not an effective maneuver for clearing secretions. That's why the final answer is letter C. Coughing, deep breathing, and adequate hydration are essential for achieving effective airway clearance. Yeah. Now for the next question. When assisting with psychological issues for the client with lung cancer, which epidemiologic factor should the nurse keep in mind? So this question talks about lung cancer and you as a nurse must be aware of the idea of lung cancer. You must know that symptoms of lung cancer are usually recognized as needing treatment late in the course of the disease. That is why letter B is incorrect because symptoms are not usually recognized early. Then look at letter C. Tumor growth does not typically begin in a bronchus and progress upward, but this information has no relation to the client's psychological adaptation to the disease, so letter C is also wrong. Oh. And also, lung cancer is not caused by cigarette smoking alone. Usually, it is associated with multiple causes, so the answer is letter A, which is the nurse should help the client family to approach the diagnosis of lung cancer from a realistic perspective, which is 5 years survival rate tend to be low because symptoms can be ignored or attributed to the other causes early in the disease. <sighs> so that's the final answer. For the next question, what pharmacologic treatment would the nurse administer aimed at prevention of pulmonary embolism? So, what do you think the answer? So, by pulmonary embolism, if you answer Vita K or Protamine Sulfate, you are wrong because both of them facilitates clotting and counteract the effect of anticoagulants. Ah. So just imagine, there is a progressive formation of pulmonary embolism, then you provide the patient Vita-K or protosulfate, which will provide more clotting. It will just make the situation worsen. Ah. So letter B and letter D are both wrong. Ah. So among the two, some of you might answer streptokinase as it is a thrombolytic drug, but thrombolytic drugs may be used to dissolve a clot that is already formed. Oh. 
And according to the question, prevention of pulmonary embolism. So you need something that is anticoagulant, <gasps> which is letter C. And it is effective intervention to prevent pulmonary embolism. Wow! So that's it. Now let's proceed to the next question. A client is hospitalized with a diagnosis of pneumonia. Which finding, based on the nurse's knowledge, are indicative of a deteriorating clinical state? Select all that apply. <coughs> and another set of question. Now when we say pneumonia, what findings do you think there is? If you think increased respiratory rate is included, you are correct. Yeah. And if you also think tachycardia is included, you are also correct. Tachycardia and agitations are early signs of respiratory distress. So A, B, and C is now in the list. Now for the cyanosis, it develops later in the progression of respiratory distress, but it is still an indication of client's deterioration. So four of them are now on the list. Now look at letter E. Do you think increased urinary output is also included? Actually, it is not included because it is the opposite of what the nurse would expect in a client with respiratory distress whose condition is deteriorating. So the final answer is letter A, B, C, and D. Aww. Now let's proceed for the next question. For the hospitalized client, which manifestation would the nurse assess to the symptom of pulmonary embolism? <gasps> Now, by looking among the four choices, yeah. what do you think here is the manifestation of a pulmonary embolism? If you answered letter D, you are wrong because bilateral wheezing is more often associated with asthma than with pulmonary embolism. Aww. So, bilateral wheezing is not involved in pulmonary embolism. And also, when you have pulmonary embolism, you might often feel panic because of the sudden dyspnea. So increased in heart rate is abrupt, not slow. That's why letter A is not included. You might answer letter B, but always remember that cyanosis of the upper torso is associated with embolism of a central vein other than the pulmonary vasculate. So letter B is incorrect and the final answer is letter C, which is symptoms associated with pulmonary embolism typically have a sudden onset. Come on. Now for the last question. Yeah. A client underwent a thoracentesis a few hours earlier. What findings should the nurse report immediately to the healthcare provider? So just by looking again the four choices, what do you think is the very alarming among them? If you answered letter D, fever that is gradually elevating, you are wrong because fever might or might not be related to thoracentesis. Oh. So letter D is eliminated. Oh. So among the three, some of you might answer letter C, which is also incorrect. Yeah. Yep, because diminished breath sounds on the affected lung base would occur with atelectasis. Oh. So letter C is also eliminated. And we are left with two choices. Maybe most of you did not choose letter B, the onset of crepitus. But actually, the correct answer is letter B. <gasps> Oozing of blood from the thoracentesis puncture site is not uncommon and does not require emergency intervention as with crepitus. Because the finding of crepitus at any time is associated with pneumo thorax and should be reported immediately to the healthcare provider. Oh, come on. That's why your answer must be letter B. Onset of crepitus. And that's it. Easy or difficult? <coughs> so that's for our part 1 respiratory disorder. I hope you would watch for the part 2 and 3 of this video which you'll find on my channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.